So what we'll do now is combine all the previous elements that we constructed in other videos and put them together into one architectural element. We're going to start with a cube 3D and again we're going to scroll down to initialize in the tool palette and we'll make a few adjustments here just so that our cube resembles more of the rectangular shape of the bottom of a building. And just like we did for our pillar, we're going to go into our unified skin. We'll take our resolution all the way down and our smooth all the way down. And we'll hit unified skin. We'll redraw that and you see our polygons are more evenly distributed across the surface. And we're going to divide it a few times with smooth off. And just like we did with the pillar, we'll turn smooth back on and then do a few more divisions. That way we can get a bevel increase around the edges while still maintaining a sharp shape. So you can see here we have actually a lot of resolution to start working with. So now we'll mask off the sides because in a moment we're going to jump into Projection Master and build some bricks, but we only want to do that on the front and the back, which is why we isolate the sides with a mask. Once you have those isolated, let's jump into Projection Master by hitting G. And then we will turn deformations on, we'll turn color off, we'll turn fade off, and we'll make sure that we have normalized turned off and double sided turned on. So deformations and double sided, then we'll drop that down. And then we'll import a brick that Sebastian sculpted earlier. This was just a simple cube that was basically roughed up a little bit to look more like a brick. And in our stroke palette, we're going to again choose the line tool. For our alpha, we're going to make sure that we have this set to off. So if you go all the way over on your left hand side, you can just basically choose that blank square for off. Let's dock our stroke palette so we can adjust our spacing. Before we adjusted our spacing up to two, this time we want to adjust it lower, which is going to give us a lot of spacing in between our bricks. But you'll notice when I draw these bricks across the surface, we're not really getting the brick shape. That's because it's not aligned properly. So in our tool options, we'll scroll all the way down to preview, open that up, and this is where you can click in this window and drag to align the brick and then click store. Then we'll just simply click and draw with the line tool these bricks across the surface and you can see that spacing gives us the exact space we need. Click W for the move tool and if you click inside your canvas in an empty area and scroll up and down with your pen or mouse you'll notice that you can sync those bricks back into the surface and if you click on the move gyro you can kind of slide it across. Again shift S will duplicate so we'll just duplicate this stroke a few times and we'll just offset the pattern as we go down the brick wall one by one. So hitting shift S again and again to basically reproduce this all the way down the wall. Again very simple and very powerful stuff. To give the wall a more natural look in your stroke palette select the spray stroke. We're going to use Z add a light intensity here and with a soft alpha and the simple brush we'll just paint across the surface. The spray stroke is a really good stroke to kind of give a random feel to the surface. So as we paint across here you can see some of the bricks are getting a little bit more damaged than the other ones lifting up a little bit. We'll hit G to jump out of Projection Master and you can see that now we have our bricks projected on both sides. So we'll turn frame on because what we're going to do is start projecting in tools that we worked with earlier. So jump back into Projection Master with the same settings and if you haven't already loaded these tools in, load them in now. We're going to work with the arch first so we'll just draw that in again with Z add turned on and with the move tool we'll position it and we'll click to basically bring it forward in space so that we don't have it sitting within the bricks. And then with Shift S we'll duplicate that across over to the left side. And then of course we'll do the same shift S and then duplicate it over onto the right. Once we have the arches completed we'll select the pillar and draw that into the surface. Now you notice it's the wrong material so we'll just disable MRGB and with our move we again will position it and do a little bit of scale just to get it in the right space. And as we did with the arches once we have it positioned we'll hit shift S and then duplicate that to the other arches and just move it across the surface here. Now we'll add in kind of a pedestal that Sebastian sculpted earlier. Again with the move, rotate, and scale we'll get that into position and then duplicate it over to the other arches. 
So you can see while we're working here, it's very easy to make a very complex surface in Projection Master, which normally wouldn't be uh, super easy to sculpt by hand. Here we get very, very precise movement as to what we're creating and what we're working on. So we'll drag in another element that uh, Sebastian worked on early, earlier, kind of a top piece to this arch. And again, created the exact same way that you've seen all these other pieces created. Draw that in, we'll disable MRGB and then move that into position right at the very top of our arch. A little bit of scale. And then we'll just bring that forward in 3D space and then duplicate it across. We'll pick that up by hitting the letter G and then you can see that's been projected to both sides because we were using deformations and double-sided. So you may have noticed that we just docked the render palette over on the right hand side and in the render palette we have a pull down called preview shadow. And what we want to adjust is the length slider and the slope slider. And this is going to help bring the shadow to be a bit longer and give a lot more detail to the surface. Now that we have everything sculpted on the front and back we want to reproduce this detail on the sides. So first we're going to scroll down into our deformations palette and what we want to do is go down to the rotate slider and set this to about 45 degrees and we do this so that we can make the proper selections on the surface so I'll rotate that to 45 snap it into place holding shift and then hold control and make a mask selection over the top corner and the bottom corner and then we get this diamond checkered shape now we're gonna click smart resim but before we did that we actually hit shift D to go down in subdivision levels and then we clicked smart resim and then after clicking that smart resim we'll hit the letter D to go up one subdivision level and then repeat the smart resim we could have just clicked smart resim at the highest subdivision level but when you do it subdivision level by subdivision level it tends to work a little bit faster and ensure a lot more accuracy so we'll go down a few smart resim up one smart resim up another one smart resim until we get to our highest subdivision level but again if you just want to mask things off at the highest subdivision level and then hit smart resim you can now that we're done with our bottom floor, let's clone this and create the other two floors. And the way we'll do this is by cloning and then appending as a subtool. So we'll go up to the top of our tool palette and click the clone button. We'll scroll down to our subtools and append that new clone tool. We'll click W, click and drag an action line and then hold shift while we click that action line and drag that up. Again in the subtools click append select that clone tool and then while using transpose we can shift and drag that up and the reason we hold shift is so we don't get it knocked off to the side like this it just allows us to hold shift and slide this straight up the axes of that uh, action line that we just drew out so at this point we are pretty much done with our structure and you can see how by using projection master you can create a ton of detail in a very short amount of time and not only do you save a lot of time but you have a lot of control over your surfaces. Again, when you're allowed to draw a stroke and then reposition, scale, change the intensity, the Z add or the Z sub of that stroke, you can have a lot of control actually what you're drawing on the surface. So I'd like to thank Sebastian for taking the time to create this tutorial. Uh, it was a pleasure narrating it and I hope all of you have learned a tremendous amount from these very powerful techniques.